Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. And in this video, I share the results of a recent ballistic gel test using both factory loads currently in production for the brand new 25 Creedmoor cartridge. One from the Precision Hunter line with 128 grain ELDX bullet and one from the Match line with 134 grain ELD Match bullet. Of those two loads, Hornady only markets the ELDX load for hunting. However, that 134 grain ELD match has very impressive ballistics, and I know a lot of people like to hunt with that bullet too. Hornady only markets that bullet for target shooting, but I was still curious of how it would perform in gel, so I decided to shoot it in this test too. Plus, the ELD M bullet also performed pretty well in other tests I have conducted with other cartridges like the 22 Creedmoor and the 7mm PRC. So I shot this test using my Venatic rifle from Horizon Firearms. This rifle has a 22 inch long barrel and when I shot the test I had my Banish 30 suppressor attached to it. I shot all of this ammunition into gel blocks 50 yards away and as always, I measured velocities with my Garmin chronograph. So let's get shooting. We'll start with the Precision Hunter ammo. I'll shoot it into gel, do a brief analysis of how it performed, then do the same with the match ammo. And then I'll cover bullet expansion and weight retention for both. I'll talk about how close this ammunition came to matching the advertised velocities from Hornady. I'll also talk a little bit about how this stuff shot out of my rifle in terms of accuracy. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a closer look at how the ELDX bullet performed. Nice short neck like we like to see, and a substantial wound cavity. Pretty impressive. Nice classic football shaped sized wound cavity. Lots of bullet fragmentation, pieces of lead, copper going everywhere outside of this wound cavity. Looks like the largest point of the wound cavity is around the three and a half inch mark and the meat of the wound cavity extends from about, from about two inches out to eight to nine inches. Then the bullet continues to penetrate, goes into the second gel block, comes to rest there. Looks like it went to about 21 and three quarter inches in that second gel block, then bounced back a little bit. So I'll pull that bullet out, get you some more info. Okay, let's see how the ELD match bullet performed. Nice short neck, around a half inch or so. And here is a pretty impressive wound cavity. Looks like the meat of the wound cavity goes from about one and a half inches to around nine to 10 inches, peaks around the five and a half inch mark in the gel. Lots of fragmentation. Pieces of lead there, 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 there. Pieces of the jacket going everywhere. Bullet continues to penetrate past that goes into the second gel block, stops just shy of 18 inches of penetration. So I'll pull that bullet out, get you some more info about it. Okay, I pulled those bullets out of the gel. Uh, as you can see, both shed lots of weight. The end result was lots of fragmentation in the gel, but they held up reasonably well, and you can see here what they look like. Neither bullet blew up in the gel, not even the ELDM. Now, as you might expect, the 134 grain ELD match bullet had the lowest weight retention, both in absolute and relative terms. The ELD match had about 60% weight retention and the ELD X had about 65% weight retention. Not a tremendous difference between them though. It is worth noting that while the ELD match is softer than the ELD X, which is pretty soft itself, the ELD X also impacted going around 100 feet per second faster. Now in terms of expansion, both bullets stripped a lot of lead out of the core. And that is what uh, Hornady says their bullets are designed to do. Basically, they expand to a certain point, then pieces break off instead of the bullet continuing to expand to an obscenely high or large diameter. The idea is to maintain a certain level of expansion for additional damage to tissue, but not expand to such a large diameter that penetration suffers. These were both high velocity, but not extremely high velocity impacts. Uh, 27 to 2,800 feet per second for both. 
That's towards the upper end of what Hornady says the ELDX is designed for, but it's not like a super high velocity impact like a 22 Creedmoor going over 3,000 feet per second at short range. So we had over 2x expansion for both bullets. Interestingly, the ELDX was expanded to a larger final diameter than the ELD match, but the ELD match retained less weight. Now that softer ELD match bullet just had more pieces that got ripped off in the expansion. And so this is possible that that accounts for the smaller expanded diameter. But like I said, both bullets really expanded a lot. Let's take another look at the gel. Both bullets are pretty ugly, but they also produced ugly wounds. They made very wide wound cavities with lots of secondary fragments. Now I was pretty impressed by the terminal performance of this cartridge, especially with the ELDX bullets. Both bullets produced wide wound cavities that were surprisingly long. Now, just as I suspected, the ELD match made a wider and slightly shorter wound track, and it didn't penetrate quite as deep overall. That's not surprising. The ELD match is a softer bullet than the ELDX, and it has basically no expansion inhibiting mechanisms in it. The jacket is thinner overall. It doesn't have a taper jacket that gets thicker towards the base like the ELDX. It also does not have the interlock quote unquote ring the ELDX has either. Even so, it still penetrated okay. Not great, but okay. This is quite a bit more penetration than varmint bullets I have tested. And it's even actually on par with some of the really soft bullets I have tested in cartridges like the 270 and 30-06. I personally have not hunted with this exact bullet, but I know people have with good results. Now, furthermore, I'd wager we would see better penetration with this bullet at longer range with a slower velocity impact. Now the ELDX penetrated a little deeper, made a wound cavity that was wide and long, just not quite as wide as the ELD match. There was also a lot of fragmentation with this wound, but not quite as much as I observed with the ELD match. It also penetrated quite a bit deeper too. So that's also not surprising. So to recap, Penetration wasn't excellent, but I would rate it as pretty good overall for both loads. Both bullet types also produced very impressive wound cavities, especially when you take into account that this is a small-ish caliber, moderately powerful cartridge. I'm not talking about a 300 Win Mag or a 338 Lapua or any of that stuff here. This is a real mild-mannered, sweet shooting round, easy to shoot accurately, which we'll talk about here in a second, and it produced pretty darn impressive wounds in the ballistic gel. I do have to give my normal disclaimer though. Results in clear gel like this do not normally translate one-to-one -one into real world situations on game. Bullets tend to penetrate better, but not make as large of a wound cavity in clear gel like this versus a real life animal. Animals also aren't completely homogenous like this gel is either. So the results should be taken as a general trend. I'm not saying that if a bullet penetrates 17 inches in gel that it will penetrate exactly that far in real animals from every angle, regardless of what it hits. I'm saying that if a bullet demonstrates wide, shallow penetration in gel, it will probably produce wide, shallow penetration in animals. The same is true of narrow, deep penetration. Likewise, if bullet A penetrates better than bullet B in gel, well, it will probably penetrate better than bullet B in an animal, all other things being equal. Now let's talk about accuracy and velocity very briefly for this ammo. Both loads performed very close to advertised in the velocity department. The Precision Hunter ammo shot a little bit faster than advertised, the match ammo a little bit slower than advertised. Now I did shoot this stuff with a suppressor, but remember I was also shooting this ammo out of a rifle with a 22 inch long barrel. Both will probably be even faster out of a 24 inch long barrel. Not a huge difference in terms of how they performed relative to what was advertised, but I'd say this stuff is living up to expectations right now in the velocity department. Accuracy was also outstanding for both. Sub MOA with each one with these five shot groups I shot for it. At least at first glance, the precision hunter ammo was actually shooting even a little better than the match ammo too but I have no problems with the accuracy of this rifle or with this ammunition, at least so far. I also really like this rifle. I love how it feels. I love how it shoots. Recoil is very mild too. 
It's a piece of cake for me. Even my nine-year-old son shoots this rifle great. Now, with regards to the actual terminal performance of the 25 Creedmoor afield, I have not hunted with this cartridge yet, but I'm taking it to Africa with me this summer. I will have another video for you after I return where I talk about how the cartridge performs in detail, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see that video as soon as it drops. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. I know the 25 Creedmoor is a brand new SAMI standardized round and the 128 grain ELDX is a brand new bullet. But the cartridge itself and the 134 grain ELD match have existed in the Wildcat space for many years. So, have you used the 25 Creedmoor afield? What about that match bullet? How did it perform for you? What bullet did you use? I welcome your feedback. Likewise, leave a comment on this video. Let me know the cartridge bullet combination you would like me to use in future gel tests I publish on YouTube. So far, I have published a bunch of other gel tests. They're all on a YouTube playlist for you to peruse. And I'm open to suggestions from you on what you want to see from me in the future. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want more content along these lines, visit thebiggamehuntingblog.com slash ebook. Sign up there. You can get a free ebook on the best hunting calibers. I've also put a link to where you can get that ebook in the video description and in the pinned comment. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and good hunting.